okay. Well, I guess it already started. It seemed like it went really quick. So uh, my name is Ryan Saltz. I'm the director of Launch SA. Um, Launch SA is an entrepreneurship center. We're normally located at the downtown Central Library in San Antonio. However, um, not recently, as you can tell, COVID is making us all sort of do everything virtually, um, which really kind of presented the idea or the, the issue that many people don't really know how to navigate getting a business online. Um, if you feel yourself uh, as somebody that's not necessarily technically savvy, um, you know, it can create a big barrier to your entry. And uh, a lot of times if you go sort of the third party route of hiring somebody to help you with these things, um, sometimes you can end up spending more money than you really, you sh really should or you really should have to. So our goal within this series as a whole is to provide you a nice uh, series or set of instructions that ideally get you to the point where you can um, start your own business online as a, in a cost-effective manner. So uh, my goal today is to really kind of give you an overview of some of the web terminology, give you sort of some starting points to think about as you look to build online and give you some ideas and some, some concepts uh, to really accentuate your online business. Now this, is, this session today is not gonna be comprehensive, but we are gonna have some sessions in the future that are actually going to show you uh, in a more step-by-step -step guided version, maybe not perfectly guided, but guided version, um, how to actually get your uh, e-commerce or informational site online uh, at a, at a cost-effective rate. And so we'll be doing some sessions that highlight some of the common uh, systems, out-of-the-box uh, tools that exist, such as Shopify, um, Wix, uh, WordPress, and I think maybe one or two more. So. Um, so uh, that's really my, my introduction. Um, uh, like I said, I already kind of found out a few folks what they're looking to get out of this. I just wanna see if anybody else might have uh, anything that they'd like to add to that. Um, and by all means, if you are confused about anything that I'm saying, or uh, if there's something you'd like me to elaborate on, just feel free to uh, let me know. You can either unmute yourself or you can drop it in the chat and I will do my best to respond in a way that makes more sense. Um, so before I kind of go any deeper, I just want to see, uh, does anybody else have any um, things that they'd like to get out of this today? Okay, well, no problem. Um, we will move it forward and if anything comes up, just feel free to let me know. Happy to help. So I'm going to be presenting from this PDF, which is titled Web Stuff 101. I'm a fairly casual person, so as I mentioned before, just feel free to interrupt. Can you all see this? Or is anyone having any issues seeing it? I just somebody can unmute and tell me if they can see it or not. Uh, yeah, I could see it. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So uh, I unfortunately can't see the chat from here. So if you do happen to drop something into the chat, uh, just feel free to let me know that you asked something or just speak up and let me know what you are interested in. So um, like I mentioned, this presentation is really meant to kick off the series that we have. Um, and it's going to really focus on some of that initial terminology. And these are some of the things that people tend to get wrong uh, or at least tend to misunderstand as they go through. Um, you know, getting a, a website online could be, you know, somewhat daunting. I, I think a lot of people still have this perception that the Internet is uh, a series of ones and zeros. And maybe at some level it is. But uh, nowadays, most things are fairly uh, easily adapted, easily understandable and, and consumable uh, for even, you know, the least technically savvy person to get um, access to. And so i um, just going to kind of move forward. And, and as we go through this, I'll try to prompt you with some questions and really get you to think about, you know, what is the purpose of a website? Uh, what, what we're really trying to combat here is, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about what you should have within your business and why you should have it. And so 
um, really I want to present this first question, you know, do you need a website? Um, uh, does anyone want to, want to answer that? Is there a sweeping yes or sweeping no, or is it a maybe? I think it'd be a yes. I think it'd be a yes. What, what is your, what is your reason for that? I just think you, you reach a, a wider uh, variety of people. Um, okay. That's, I mean, I've been doing social um, uh -huh. networking, which has been good, uh, social marketing also. Um, but that's what I'm really wanting to do is set up the website. I'm just, I don't really know, you know, how to do so like okay. to make it right. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that all businesses need websites? I would think so. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like another store. It's like another location in itself. Okay. So yeah, people uh, need to have access to you um, to see what you're all about, what your business is and everything okay. like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's potentially fair. Um, you know, I would say that there, this is, this is a question that, you know, may seem like a, a necessity for everyone today, but uh, there are plenty of reasons why you might not need a website. Um, for example, your audience isn't on the internet. Um, I'll give you uh, an example that might seem kind of uh, outlandish at first, but ideally you'll follow it. Um, if you've ever flown on an airplane before, uh, and actually, you know, this company may have gone out of business for what it's worth. I can't remember. I feel like they, I heard about them going out of business or something. Um, there was a, a, a magazine that was in the back of every seat and it was called Sky Mall. And ha has anyone ever heard of that magazine before? No. Yep. No. Okay. Well, fair yeah. enough. They probably, okay. Well, some, one person has, it. uh, that's great. So, um, Sky Mall magazine was basically like, uh, think of it as like a, a home shopping network, HSN, for, um, uh, think of it as like an HSN for um, your, your flight. And so you're sitting in your, your flight seat, bored, there's no TV, there's no internet, there's really not much access to phones but they have you captive there with a magazine that has a number of products which you can purchase in flight through various means. Um, their market is really, at the time, um, was only the people in those seats. So having a website for them would only really make sense if you wanted to get something in follow-up. But predominantly that market was sitting there uh, right at that point. Or if you wanna think about it, um, you know, if we're continuing with sort of an airport example, um, if you're the coffee shop that's inside of the airport, do you, do you need a, do you need a website that lets the world know that you exist? Uh, maybe not because the majority of the people, in fact, all of the people that are going to visit you are going to be trans transient, uh, folks that are going through the airport. So your market is likely not a person that lives away from the airport. That's not going to the airport for any reason that would that would need to know about you. So um, one of the points that I'm trying to really make here is that depending on what you're selling and who you're selling to, it just may not make sense for you to have one. Um, uh, one example might be, uh, you know, think about Tamale Boy. Uh, if you've ever heard of Tamale Boy, it's like a, a service they tend to roll up on uh, bars in the late hours with tamales. And um, if you're hungry, they potentially can fill that gap for you. Uh, without you having to leave. Now, they, they do actually have a uh, brick and mortar and they do actually do catering and a number of other things. Um, however, in the initial onset, it was pretty much, he would show, or you know, their teams would show up to the, uh, to the bar and they would sell you tamales. Um, they didn't really need you to uh, know that they existed beyond that because that was their primary method of sales. Like their audience was people that are at bars that might be hungry. So not necessarily targeting the folks that are looking for, um, you know, the authentic Somali uh, outside of that, those sets of hours. Does that make sense? Anybody yes. have any issues with that? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So th this is just something that I want you to think about. Um, you know, it, it's, if you're selling, uh, for example, if you're selling, um, walkers to uh you know older people that might have uh walking issues 
Um, if they're not, if they're not familiar with purchasing online, again, it may not necessarily relate to them. Uh, and they might be more willing to go to your brick and mortar store, uh, or they might be more willing to order from a catalog. Um, so you really have to think about who is your market and why are they looking for you online? Um, if you're doing a, a service based business, right? Um, there are some other things to think about. Um, you let's, uh, look at perhaps like massage therapy. Um, if your business is located on the Southeast side of San Antonio, um, it's unless, unless you're sort of a destination type business, it's going to be probably fairly rare that you're going to get a lot of customers from the Northwest side. Um, it's just simply a matter of geographics. Um, the people that are going to likely frequent your business, if it's in a physical area, are going to tend to be from around that area within uh, maybe a one to five uh, mile radius at best. Um, so, you know, really, who are you selling to is, an, is another uh, major component, major, major consideration to think about as you're deciding on, you know, why do you have this website and what is it for? Um, if you're, you know, really trying to highlight the benefits of what you do or your spe specific expertise, um, you know, that might be something that you host uh, an informational website for that you don't have any sales for. Um, and that might be as a way to, you know, inform your customers prior to them entering your business. Um, but, and you know, nowadays so many people look at, um, they, they look at their, uh, the business that they want to frequent and their first stop might actually be Google or their first stop might actually be social media. And so do you necessarily need your own personal website when the majority of the customers are going to ask Google, where are you at? Are you is it possible that you're able to just really fill out your Google business profile and add all of the information there? And maybe that would suffice for your business rather than, um, rather than otherwise. Uh, another example of uh, just, you know, last one on businesses that may or may not necessarily need a website, a uh, gas station. You know, a gas station is purely built on convenience. It's generally built close to where you are on a thoroughfare that you might need something. Uh, if you go to almost any um, convenience store or website, um, you'll probably notice that they don't sell any of the products online. If anything, it's more of an informational uh, concept about their business and if, you know maybe opportunities for franchising that concept. But in a general sense, there, there's very little benefit for them to advertise or to market to consumers because the again the market that they're selling to is is just not interested in finding them online um so i want you to think about that as we move forward um you know you want to you want to really identify with your client and understand why are they looking for you online like what is their what is their client journey and why why does it make a difference to them that you have a website because if it turns out you don't really need it well maybe you can save some money are there any questions so far anything that uh, anybody would like to bring up or say or anything like that? I know you mentioned like, um, you know, they'll, they'll use Google and stuff. And I did see something. I just don't know if you guys are maybe familiar with it. Um, it was like an advertisement for Google where, like you said, you enter all your information and they kind of just can go there and even look and, and like, like pop up menus or something like that to come up on that. Is that something that you can do on Google? Yeah, so Google actually, and I'll, and I'll kind of walk you through this um, in a little bit. And we're going to have a session, ideally, that actually has all of the, um, uh, all of the, or at least a starting point of information about um, uh, how to get your business on Google. But they have a website that's uh, gybo.com. It uh, stands for Get Your Business Online. Uh, it's a free okay. resource Google provides. And if you've noticed, uh, whenever you search for a business on Google, uh, if that business is a geographically located business, meaning they have a physical storefront, uh, nine times out of 10, they might have um, a profile. And so you'll notice like they have pictures, it might have an address, it could have a link to a website, um, store hours, um, but, you know, it's a common way for people to keep their audience updated. Um, and so that is, yes. 
Can you make me a host so I can scream? I already Sorry. did that. I already did that. I'm a I'm a co-host, not a host. Sorry. But go ahead. Which one are you now? The team address or the other one? The launch team, yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, you guys. Wow. Uh so so embarrassing. I'm just kidding. Um I'm just kidding though. So um yeah, so they also offer a number of other things. In fact, Google has a um a, a very general uh, website creator, which is also free. Uh, it's called Google Sites, um, and it can per, uh, it can give you or allow you a very simple form of an informational website. You wouldn't be able to sell products through it, at least that's not my understanding. But if you were simply just trying to provide a, a web presence and maybe you know some photos and just sort of a, a stamp that shows credibility for you, Google offers that, and it's actually it's you know pretty good. I always like to say that. You know, if you're really going to get online, um, you probably should start with Google just because that's where, you know, 90% of people uh, anecdotally are going to start their journey in searching, right? And, you know, the best uh, search engine or the most common search engine is Google. So um, if you show up or if at least you're listed within their, um, within their resources, it's going to make it easier for you to appear to your customers, especially if you have... Um, if you're listed there, you can also list your business uh, through Google. Even if you're not a brick and border, you can list it if you're a service based business and you have a geographical area that you uh, that you visit. So, for example, if you are uh, a plumber, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a physical location. Um, Google offers uh, a number of different variants of building your profile that uh, allow you to show a service area um and and still build that sort of uh, brand recognition within their within their system so uh, it's a really great place to start i definitely recommend you checking it out and it's completely free there's also a lot of uh education on that and like i said that's uh, gybo.com so i'm they're not paying me but i'm happy to tell you that it's a great resource anything else that anyone would like to bring up or um, i can continue moving forward Okay, so um, really this is, uh, I'm gonna start with kind of some, some ideas of branding um, and really uh, understanding the, the simplest of terms within you know, web. Um, number one, I'm gonna start with domain name. That may not necessarily be the best place to start, but I'm gonna start there. Um, so uh, how many of you know what a domain name is? Or does anybody not know what a domain name is? Okay, I'll, I'll, if I hear silence, I'll just assume that you all know what it is. So um, a domain name, it, it basically is, you know, might as well be considered your real estate, your address for your website. If you're unfamiliar with how the, the web works, um, I try to relate it to uh, folks as a, a filing system. And so the, the internet is essentially, think of it as a, a, a filing cabinet. And uh, the website is essentially the file that you're trying to get. To, to get to or to find. Um, that file has all sorts of, you know, different imagery, different, um, you know, things that are held within it that might have, you know, how it looks stylistically or how it functions. Um, but in order to get to that file, you have to know what filing cabinet it's in. And so um, the domain name is essentially, you know, the specific location that it exists. Um, to go a little further and just give you some, you know, more background on that filing system as it were, um, the filing cabinet itself, you can think of as the web host. Um, uh, is anybody unfamiliar with web hosting? Okay, again, I'll just assume that y'all know about it, but I'll kind of try to go through it really quickly. Uh, a web host is, is essentially um, the person or the organization rather that um, holds that file. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the filing cabinet as it were. There are a number of different hosts you may have heard of, GoDaddy, um, Google hosts websites as well. Uh, Rackspace locally, they're, um, they're a, a large multinational um, web hosting service, provide a number of other things. Um, 
but essentially that's, that's kind of how the internet works. It's a filing cabinet and you're trying to find files. So, um, one of the, the biggest things, or the, you know, one of the more important things to think about as you're um, naming your file, if you were, uh, is, is figuring out what's going to be memorable, recognizable, what's going to be common uh, when, you, when you name it, right? You, a lot of people perhaps might um, uh, decide to pick something that's uh, cute or might pick something that's really long or might, you know, decide to do it with some sort of form of misspellings. If you think about um, you know tech companies, it's not unfamiliar for them to choose really uncommon wordings or spellings um, for you know their own personal uh, branding. However, you know how we how easy is that for your customer to find? Um, you have to really kind of put yourself in your customer's shoes all along the journey and say, how can I make this extremely easy for my customer to remember? And so, um, what you're going to want to try to shoot for is something that's going to be more brandable versus generic, right? Uh, if my website is uh, Main Street Pizza, for example, uh, that's probably a really great name, except for the fact that there's probably a Main Street Pizza in thousands of cities across just the US, because there's generally gonna be a Main Street in most cities across the US. So, um, you know, it, it might be Main Street as San Antonio, if that's uh, something that you're thinking about. Or it could be something completely different. It could be Main Street Pizzeria. Um, maybe most people would stop at just simply pizza. Maybe pizzeria might be the thing. Um, or it could be something else that you might be known for. Like maybe it's Main Street Family, if you know the vibe of your place is about family. Um, so you want to kind of think about you know what's going to stand out and really be memorable for my customer. And this is you know usually people are going to probably choose their domain far after they've chosen their business name. So um, as you're thinking about your, your business name and, and how that relates to getting online, ideally you find some synchronicity uh, in getting them close to each other so they're easy to find. Um, there are websites that will actually help you figure out what your name should be um, if you struggle with finding uh, the availability of stuff because um, in, you know, different from the real world uh, where there's you know, thousands of main streets uh, there's only one main street on online. And so uh, the issue with that is, you know, if your business name is generic to begin with and you're uh, struggling to be visible, then it's going to be harder for harder for you to get that name online and then again, connect the dots for those for those things. So if it was ABC pest control. There's probably an ABC pest control in many other cities. And so unless you happen to be the first person to get that domain name online, it might end up being abcpestcontrol123.com. And then, you know, how, how easy is that going to be for your customers to remember? Um, and ideally, you, you want to try to um, go with uh, something that's shorter. So the most common length of something like that is going to be around 12 characters, um, meaning like 12 letters or numbers. Um, you want it to be easy to type because, uh, and I'll give you an example. There's a a uh, commercial I've heard on the radio a number of times, and it said, I think he's a real estate guy, um, if I'm not mistaken. But his name is, uh, I think it's name, his name is Rick Edelman. And uh, his, the way he spells his name is R-I-C, not R-I-C-K. So if you think about it, um, you know, if, you, if I said my name was Rick, you might assume automatically that my name is R-I-C-K. This is R-I-C. Um, so when he tells you his website, it was rickedelman.com. He actually has to say Rice Delman uh, for you to understand how that would be phonetically spelled online. Um, so you want to also make sure that what you're providing people uh, is not only easily memorable, but also easy to enter in um, because people commonly misspell things. Um, for example, if Launch SA was called Entrepreneur Center, I mean, it's, I would probably have a hard time spelling entrepreneur correctly every single time. Um, until it was just, you know, second nature. So while it may be simple to you, it may not be simple to other people. So try to, try to keep these things in mind as you go through it. Um, because, you know, again, it's not as simple as being in the real world where you, where you might see, uh, see a business name and, and associate it with a place. Much harder to do when you're doing it from recall. So uh, ideally, it's easy to pronounce. Um, you don't want something that's... Um, you know, gonna, gonna sound off or look off when you say it out loud because uh, in repeating that to others, is it gonna be shareable uh, 
uh, for them to remember as well. So, um, for example, I'll use uh, Lyft, the rideshare company. Um, you, if if you were unfamiliar with Lyft before, um, their name is spelled L-Y-F-T. However, if I just said Lyft, commonly you might assume that it's L-I-F-T, and that could be a problem. So um, you want to make sure that you know the spellings are are right, but also that the pronunciation makes sense too. Um, trying to think of another example, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that doesn't really um, sound as it's spelled, but I'm sure you can probably think of something. Uh, you'll want to avoid uh, hyphens and, and numbers. So a lot of people think that um, having you know hyphens or numbers might make it easier for them to remember their um, their website uh, or to try to ensure that they get the um, the same sort of uh, what do you call it repetition that they have in the real world. But it's going to be hard for your customers again to remember that there was a hyphen in between. Uh, the you know first word of the the domain and the second word, so you you kind of want to just try to make it as simple as possible, um, and then again long you want to think long term versus short term. Um, this is actually something that I would encourage all people to do as they're building their business, and that's you know try to try to move with the the end in mind. So um, a lot of people make the mistake of uh, pigeonholing themselves early because they didn't really think about what they wanted their business to be down the road. And that doesn't mean that you should have any sort of paralysis on moving forward, um, but it does mean to, to keep an eye at where you want to be in, in you know, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, if this business continues to, to go well. And I'll, I'll give you a, an example of a company locally that we've worked with and they sort of ran into this particular dilemma. Um, ha has anyone here been to Revolution Coffee and Juice? No. No, okay. Um, so really great coffee shop. I encourage you to check them out if you get a chance. Um, so their website, it was spelled Revolution, um, sort of in a more Latin spelling, if you will, uh, versus Revolution. So um, automatically, if you're trying to find them online, you may get confused with that. Um, if that's just an unfamiliar word for you or an unfamiliar spelling. The second part is that um, when, when they went online, their website was revolucionsa.com. And for you, that might sound like not a big deal. However, uh, Revolucion is now, is, now in, um, is, is now in Houston. And so, and at one point they were also in um, they were also in Austin. And so it created the dilemma of having a website that was branded for San Antonio, but also showed up in other places, um, which can make it kind of a problem. And you might want to think about that if you have physical products as well. Um, you know, if you have something that, for example, there's a beer company that came out of uh, New York and they're called Brooklyn Lager. Um, that was the name of the, the company. They only made one beer at the time and it was the lager. Um, later on in their journey, they ended up making more than lagers. However, their name was Brooklyn Lager. Um, so they had to figure out a way to kind of reimagine what their company and their products would look like when they started making Pilsners and Ambers and stuff like that. So the more you can think about the potential, uh, end in, in, um, your journey, or at least what you know, an end vision might look like, the more um, you're gonna end up saving money and saving a headache down the road um, by making those early mistakes and mislabeling yourself or pigeonholing yourself too early. Um, that can also be uh, another, another thing to consider is you may not be doing the thing that you're doing today down the road. So for example, if uh, the website was Revolution Coffee and Juice, what happens when you start selling beer and wine? Maybe that, that works on your menu. Or what happens when you start adding food? Um, are people going to initially recognize that you do more than that? Or for example, what if you start selling apparel? And this isn't far-fetched. The owners actually at one point had a, a running store and it was semi-associated. Um, 
you know, are people going to remember Revolution Coffee and Juice selling T-shirts? Probably not. Uh, just because it's the, the association is gone there and you're going to think of it more in terms of a, a physical thing. So um, try to see if there is a way to provide that uh, diversity uh, as you go through that as well. So I realize that's a super long and maybe convoluted lesson to begin with, but does anybody have any questions? Is there anything I can explain initially with that? Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully this is uh, good for you. So, you know, this is sort of the next uh, component I wanted to get into, which is what am I buying? I, I've already really kind of explained what, um, how, how websites work in a general sense, if you go back to my filing cabinet analogy. Um, but there's a, a handful of different things that you might see as you're kind of buying uh, and getting started in, in building your website. And so number one is the domain name. That's what most people are familiar with. Uh, and usually you, you're buying that domain from a company that also happens to be a hosting company. So you'll notice that um, GoDaddy commonly uh, is maybe where most people start. And so when most people might be familiar with, but they're actually hundreds, if not way more than that, uh, places that you can purchase domains from. Um, GoDaddy not only sells you the domain, but they also potentially can sell you the hosting. Um, there are some considerations when, make, when making those purchases. It's not just purely what's the cheapest. Um, they, they do have some, some levels of differentiation, but I'll, I'll go into that perhaps a little later. As you're purchasing a domain, one of the, one of the most common additions that you'll see um, to that purchase is um, an election called the Who Is Privacy. And so um, as you're buying a domain, you might you know, not realize there's a whole bunch of extra check boxes that equate to more money. And you know, if you're not, not really familiar, you may say, oh, I don't want that. And perhaps you did, you just didn't really know what it was. Uh, or you may sign up for something that's extra because it was presented to you and you, don't, you might not need it. Um, so you can save yourself some recurring money um, going forward. So um, all, all, all domains are eventually uh, registered with an organization called the ICANN. And I don't remember exactly what ICANN stands for, but it's the international something of something of something. And I can't off the top of my head remember what it is. But basically, uh, it's an organization that really kind of um, monitors the uh, the registration of domains across the internet um, and creates new subdomains. So when I say subdomains, what I'm referring to is instead of a uh, a dot com, you know, there's also dot biz, dot um, org, dot co. Now there's even like, I think you can do dot coffee, a whole bunch of new ones that have come out. So they, they're sort of this international organization that, that focuses on this stuff. Um, one of the elections that you can choose to get is called who is privacy. And so when you are signing up for a domain, you have to provide who owns the domain, who's, who's that domain registered to, right? Um, and that's always going to link back more or less to a person. It may link back to a company if that's how you've registered it. But um, for the most part, it'll end up leading back to a physical address and likely someone's name, if not company name. Um, the issue with that is if you choose not to uh, elect for the who is privacy, then you'll more than likely get spammed in the mail um, if you're wondering how, you know, people know uh, you've started a new business, it might correspond to the fact that you bought a domain and you didn't elect this who is privacy. Uh, you'll end up getting credit card offers for business stuff. And if you really want to avoid getting a bunch of junk mail um, or random, you know, solicitations, this isn't a bad thing to do. Um, it generally just provides some anonymity to uh, you as the owner to your business. Uh, at least from an online setting. So th there's some value in it. Uh, it's not something that you have to do, of course. If you want to save the money, you don't, you don't have to elect for it at all. Um, the next uh, section here, the SSL certificate. So this uh, stands for, I believe, um, uh, security standard license, I think. I, you know, I'm probably a little off on that, to be honest with you, but um, essentially, it is a, is a marker that your um, website has a level of um, encryption for data transfer 
uh, on your site. And this is absolutely a necessity if you're considering doing any sort of online sales or data transmission. So how do you know that a site has this SSL? Um, in general, if you look at the domains that, you're, um, that you uh, go to on the internet, uh, you'll probably notice that 90%, maybe more than that, are HTTPS colon forward slash, you know, the name of the website or whatever. Um, the HTTPS, S is the, is the symbol for security. So that basically, and you'll, you'll oftentimes now see even a, a, a lock or a picture of a lock um, within that, um, within that website. And so one of the, or within the domain bar. So th this is extremely important. Like I said, if you're going to sell anything or take data in, um, you want to have that level of uh, encryption so that any data transfer is ideally more secure than, than not. For websites that don't have this, um, oftentimes that can actually uh, detour search engines from listing them. Uh, if you've ever, you know, gone to a website and it says your uh, this website security uh, certificate is, you know, out of date or something like that. Generally, that's because their SSL certificate has expired or something else has gone wrong with it. Uh, and oftentimes, the the web browser, whatever you use, Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari, is basically trying to just protect you from providing information to a potentially scrupulous website. So uh, that one's probably about 10, 10 to eighteen dollars additional uh, per year. Um, might be a little bit more than that, but uh, absolute necessity if you're doing online sales. Then the the final two, email hosting. So if you ever want to have your you know company to look even more official than just you know Donna's Coffee at Gmail dot com, um, if you want it to be you know Donna at Donna's Coffee then you're going to want to get email hosting. And so it's actually fairly simple to set up, but um, it's, an additional, it, it's an additional cost. Um, one of the things that you should know is that you don't necessarily have to get um, email. You, you have, don't necessarily have to use the system of emails uh, that you know, your web host company is uh, selling you. So if you really like Yahoo, for example, you can totally buy hosting from them and have that set up. Or if you really like Google, for example, because you like the Google Drive and you like all of that extra stuff, you can totally buy email hosting from them. Uh, every company probably has their own version of it. So there's no reason for you to have to get it from the company that you bought your web hosting from. But it's often bucketed and included as one of the additional options that you might see. Many people end up electing it and then they don't know how to set it up or maybe they set it up um, and they, they don't know what to do after that. And so, um, end up spending a lot more money than they need to. So th this, you can leave off for a while until you feel like you're absolutely in need of having those two things relate. Um, but it's just another, another item. Generally those emails are probably about $5 per person per month. Um, and that, and that's just sort of a general number. So you can see these start to add up and they come in at a, such an infrequent basis that you might not realize that you've got all these things until renewals happen. Uh, because on average, you're gonna purchase a domain, um, maybe a one or two year thing, and then the renewal always happens to be far more expensive. Uh, and that renewal is also gonna ask you if you want the who is uh, privacy or the SSL certificate or the email hosting. So very quickly, it can start to be you know a budget of, what you thought might have been, you know, 10, 20 bucks to 150 bucks a year, uh, or, you know, over the course of a, a couple of years, if you're not like paying attention to when they, they renew. So does anybody have any questions about this? I don't, I don't hear snoring yet. So hopefully there's people are still somewhat engaged, <laughs> but, um, that I, I have to go through all the boring stuff before I can, you know, really get into anything else. So, um, you know, at this point now, I'm going to try to go in a slightly different direction, but I'll come back and forth. So, um, it, it's really important to understand, you know, what are you selling, and you know, what what is that? That is going to have an influence on what platform or what um, tools that you use in building your brand online. Um, there are a number of different off-the-shelf tools. I, I mentioned a few at the beginning. 
Shopify, um, Wix, Weebly, uh, WordPress, you may have heard of. Um, I even mentioned that Google Sites is a thing. Uh, each one of them has its own, uh, Squarespace is another one. Each one of them has its own sort of unique um, market that they, that they target and, and, and move for. So if you're simply in the market for an informational uh, website, that's, you know, you don't necessarily need to get one that's got all the bells and whistles of, um, you know, WordPress or something like that. It just might be, it just might be a little bit uh, more management on your end to pick the wrong tool. Um, if you have, have a physical product, um, you're going to benefit a lot more from one that's got the ideas of shipping already included or um, understanding that inventory is a, is a concept and ideally has that as part of the website build, build already. Um, or you're going to want to make sure that you have something that may already be uh, connected to the ability to purchase and you know, secure checkouts and, and other um, components like that. Uh, or if, you know, perhaps you're a service-based um, business, let's say that you do landscaping as an example, you might want to have the opportunity for your customers to uh, schedule their service at a later date. And so those, um, those features come in a lot of services now, but you want to make sure that you're picking one that has all of the potentials that you're looking for from the standpoint of your customer. So again, if we put our customer first and think about how they and why they would want to go to your website, how can we make it easiest for them to conduct business with us or connect with us or establish commerce with us? So um, these are some of the questions that you're gonna wanna try to identify um, because again, like I said, each one is gonna have its own benefits and, and, and negatives. And so uh, generally, uh, these these uh, platforms are all based on a subscription service. Um, and if you're selling something that is intangible, like is only going to be sold online, uh, for example, software as a service um, or a subscription based item, then, you know, that may have a, a completely different uh, listing or a completely different tool than some of the other ones that I've kind of pointed out before. So this is uh, my opinion on um, some of the e-commerce platforms and uh, not all of them are uh, necessarily the best for e-commerce and just so you understand if you're unfamiliar with the term e-commerce um, is basically your online sales uh, internet commerce for you know some people if you're not familiar and again this is my opinion so by all means you know the other people would probably argue that I'm wrong on certain pieces of this but uh, to each his own you know there's good tools for good times uh, a lot of people will initially bring up, or at least in more recent years, have brought up the idea of WordPress. Uh, has anybody ever used WordPress before or um, know what WordPress is? No. Okay, perfect. So um, WordPress initially came out and was a really common blogging platform. So uh, mainly made for people to really share their thoughts and sort of a an easy, convenient way, uh, manage a blog, if you will. It really wasn't made for business. However, some of the reasons that it's become more popular are um, in general, it doesn't have uh, an upfront cost. So many of the other tools on this list are gonna have a monthly fee that's associated with using um, their service. WordPress doesn't have that. However, it does come with a lot of other potentially uh, more problematic issues that make it less advantageous for you to use. So uh, another thing that is really popular about it as a platform is that it's got a lot of different um, customization points. Um, they've really adapted it to make it uh, great for uh, many different reasons. And in fact, if you go to our, our website, launchsa.org, that website is built through WordPress. Um, it's very simple to use in many ways, drag and drop. But again, it's going to be oriented more towards uh, conducting business, um, really, or not conducting business, but rather more towards uh, blogging and informational in, um, setups. There are many different themes that you can buy that'll have sort of custom layouts and custom ways for you to input stuff. Um, each one of those is going to have its own price per year that you might need to renew. 
Um, but in a general sense, a lot of people like it because it's got all of this freedom to do a lot of stuff with. But if you're not technically savvy, it's probably not your best option um, because down the road, if, uh, even if you do have somebody build something for you through WordPress, it's going to require a lot more maintenance. Um, and, and just generally, you're going to probably not always um, be the person to keep it up to date on certain things that you add to it. So I kind of only recommend WordPress to people starting out. If you're doing something that's more informational that you're probably not considering would need a lot of updating. So if you're going to be listing products, WordPress really probably isn't your thing. But if you're, for example, just telling people you exist and like, Hey, this is, you know, I'm a massage therapist. Here are my credentials. Um, you know, I take bookings here, here, and here, get in touch. WordPress is fairly straightforward, pretty easy to get started. Um, with WordPress, that you're actually going to be required to purchase uh, web hosting. Um, with uh, many of the other platforms, you actually won't need to, to do that. And so I'll go into the next platform, which is uh, Shopify. Has anyone ever heard or used Shopify before? And I'll just, I'll take that as a no. So um, Shopify is probably my favorite tool. Um, it's actually really oriented towards uh, businesses that sell products online. Um, and in fact, uh, is straight out of the box. You can uh, purchase it for uh, a monthly fee that I think it initially ranges around you know, 10 to $20. I believe right now, due to the current operating environment from COVID, they're actually offering a three month free trial, which is great if you're interested in just kind of playing around with it. Um, it it's really robust and it's oriented towards sales. Um, so when you log into many of these other options that I'm showing you here, Weebly, uh, WordPress, Wix, um, you're, you're more than likely going to be prompted to edit the content on the site. Whereas within Shopify, when you log in, your first instance of engagement is actually going to be what your sales look like. And so that's another reason I really like it as a, a business platform, just because ideally, once you've set up what your site looks like or what your products are, you really want to focus more on the, the economics of it, not so much on is this, does this look prettier today than it did yesterday, but more so is it making a difference to my sales. Um, it's extremely friendly to use. It's very drag and drop oriented. You can upload photos very, very quickly. Uh, and has now really become one of the predominant, um, if not probably the preferred platform for people that are doing sales online. It's got a number of integrations that'll help you connect with uh, shipping and ordering and many, most, um, most uh, websites uh, for small scale folks, uh, product people start in a, in a Shopify. And in fact, some of them, it can even scale up to very large companies as well. So very versatile product. Um, Squarespace, that's an, another option that exists. Um, I know a lot of people that have started out with that. It's, it, it also provides that same simple, easy to use drag and drop feel, which is really great. Um, there are a lot of uh, themes that are built into Squarespace that um, allow you to demonstrate what you're doing in a really clean, aesthetic way. Uh, however, it's really meant for showcasing more more of like portfolio work. So let's say you're a designer and you want to show off all of the designs that you've made. It's really meant more for that. Or perhaps you're a restaurant and you don't really need much except for to show your menu and have your hours and just have some like really nice, pleasant pictures. Squarespace is a great option. Um, while it does have the adaptations to actually sell through the website, it's not necessarily um, you know, perfectly attuned to that. Um, it's, I would say, again, more so for uh, information or showcase. Uh, and then you really have like the, the last two, Weebly and Wix. You might have seen Weebly or Wix. Uh, they've been doing a lot of uh, uh, promotions through uh, advertising and commercials and stuff. And uh, they're, they're both pretty simple to use, except um, the, the thing that you should understand is that they were both really built um, for blogging initially. But then it really kind of made a tran trans uh, transition over to um, stores and online online setup. So 
the customization feels a little secondhand. It feels like an add-on. Uh, it, it, they are easy to use and they're generally cheaper, but they may not necessarily fit perfectly within the, the scope of what you're trying to do. But they're you know good options necessary. Um, without hesitation, I would say you should probably check out, check them out. Um, and so the way that all of them work, except for WordPress, is that um, you would purchase the subscription from any of those uh, providers. And that subscription should allow you to build your website within their platform. And then uh, the added benefit is from almost all of them, I believe, you won't need to purchase that second piece, which is web hosting. That hosting should come through the provider itself as part of that monthly fee. Um, so that's kind of an, un you avoid one cost and just sort of baked into the price um, of the platform. Whereas with WordPress, yes, the system itself is free, but then you have to go and like kind of add all these other things to it to make it work perfectly. Uh, and that can have its own issue. So, um, does anybody have any questions about this? I realize like kind of throwing a lot at you and hopefully some of it's at least if nothing else, you have some names of places you can go look at and see if any of them really kind of fit the bill for you. And the, the one you said, like with the, the one that includes like the domain and the web hosting, that would be like Google or GoDaddy. Either one of those can also do that. Yeah, you can buy, you can buy your domain um, and your hosting from Google. You can do it from GoDaddy. Um, you can do it from almost any site. In fact, if you look up web, ho web hosting, uh, there are going to be a whole bunch of different options that you'll see. Um, and almost all of them will sell you a domain as well. Um, there, there is one thing I'll make a stipulation for. So if you do choose to do something in WordPress, um, just as a general, that there are actually hosting sites that uh, are specific to WordPress, meaning like, they will manage the updates of your site and, and, and minor things like that. Um, again, if you're brand new and beginning, as cool as it sounds to use something in WordPress, and I know, I know a lot of entrepreneurs that went that route because it was free in its own way, they ended up um, having to get rid of it and cost them more time and just kind of they got stuck. So, um, but yeah, you can definitely get your all of your stuff from either GoDaddy or, or um, Google. So. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions at this point? Okay. So, um, you know, I, I feel like it would be a disservice if I didn't really get to this point. Um, you know, it's, it's all great to set up a website and have a business and, um, you know, if you're, if this is your first time ever starting a business or, uh, even starting online or otherwise, like, um, it could be exciting and the exciting part may sometimes pull the wool over your eyes, uh, for success. And so, um, you know, the, the most common business model here, and this is the, the simplest of simplest versions is here at the bottom, uh, your sales price, whatever you're selling it for should be, um, obviously higher than your expenses, but when you subtract your expenses from your sales price, you should have a positive number, right? And uh, so most people get that, right? Uh, sell it for more than you bought it for. That's pretty straightforward. But uh, some of the things that people commonly miss are um, what goes into expenses. And I just kind of given you a number of different platforms that might be useful to you. Well, each one of them has its its monthly expense or it has maybe a transactional expense. So if you know um, you go to a grocery store and you purchase groceries, there's, um, you know, the, the grocery store itself has to pay, um, I think it's like a two or 3% transaction fee back to the credit card processor if you use a credit card, right? And they, you know, that's, that's a factor that you have to think about. And so, um, Maybe you're not including that in yours, but maybe you should. Uh, a lot of business owners in the very early stages, they don't pay themselves. Um, but if you ever wanna mature as a business and a business owner, you're going to need to pay yourself. So if you don't include what that cost might be, then you're not gonna reflect truthfully what your, what your actual profit is gonna look like at the end of the day. So things may look really great, but in the end of the day, um, 
if you're not including all of the expenses, then you may be losing a lot of money. Um, I give uh, an example of uh, the photographer that is, you know, really good at what they do. Um, and they charge, you know, $300, $400 per shoot. Um, sounds really, you know, like decent money for what it's worth. But then you realize that not only are they going out to shoot all of the photos, they're also, um, they're also going there. Um, they're also spending a lot of time editing those photos and they're also spending a lot of time hosting those photos. Uh, meaning like they're, they're putting them online and they're spending money to have them online so that you can download them from wherever you are. And all of those little costs, um, you know, can sometimes be overlooked in the end price of the product. And so if you think about taking even as, as, you know, few as 10 photos, uh, and spending, you know, as little or a lot of uh, time as an hour editing each photo, you have 10 hours worth of work, um, plus going out to do the shoot, which might be an hour or two there. And then that $400 goes from, you know, really great looking to not so great on an hourly basis. So um, again, you want to make sure that you're including all of the variables that go into your costs before you make your pricing so that you're, you're actually able to grow. Things like overhead are another one that commonly get forgotten. You know, you may be working at home and doing this all from your house right now, but um, you know, how, how much time are you spending um, or you know, how much energy are you dedicating to it within your, in your own home? Um, your, you know, if you had an office, you'd have to pay for electricity or rent. Are you budgeting those things into your price so that you can be treated as a real business and not, not looking at it as, you know, well, I have this place right now, I can work for free and there's no cost in it. That doesn't mean that there would never be a cost in it. Um, so think about that, you know, the consumer at the end of the day, they want to purchase your product. You may have some ad advantages that allow you to make it less expensive for you to make, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those, those need to transfer over to the customer because as you grow as a business, those costs are going to be realized. Does anybody have any questions about that? Did that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. I, I just really want to make sure that it makes sense. This is the, probably the biggest part that we see businesses fail is if you don't include all of your expenses into this number. So, so uh, I already kind of went through this uh, point, which is, you know, how do you connect to the internet? Um, that's, you know, shorthand or common, I guess you can say these days, but uh, the domain connects to a service, uh, you know, so you purchase the domain that may connect to a Wix or Shopify or Weebly or WordPress or whatever. And then, um, you know, if you type that domain into the uh, internet browser, um, ideally it'll come up with whatever is held within that uh, file or link. So um, anyway, there, this is uh, where I'm going to try to talk about getting found versus making it pretty. Um, you know, I think that getting online has its own question marks. A lot of people are unfamiliar with how to do that, but at least now you should have some starting points of places that can help you figure it out and that are easy enough to work with. Um, but I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the best place to start is probably going to be Google first. Um, especially if you're already in business. Now, if you're looking to sell online, obviously, um, that Google won't have a whole lot to do with that initially until you have a website and, and products. But if you're, let's say you're an at home baker, there's no reason that you can't set up a, a, a Google business profile that says you exist. Or if you're, if you own a service based business, you know, a cleaning business, for example, there's no reason you can't set up a Google business profile that says your business exists. Um, that's where a lot of people are going to start looking. So, you know, might as well put it up there first if, if it relates to what you're doing. Um, and so again, GYBO, get your business online.com. That's probably the best place to start. Um, in getting found, uh, you know, you have to make yourself visible. And that's why, again, I say Google is really great um, to start with because, you know, 90 to 95% of people are probably going to search through Google first through, than anything else. Um, but in addition to getting found, you want to make sure that when you finally are found, that what you're demonstrating or what you're showing actually has the same level of quality uh, and consistency that you hope to deliver as a company. So 
um, you don't want to have uh, you know weird colors that are impossible to uh, d differentiate or decipher when you when you you know have text if you have like lime green text on a white background you're probably not going to be able to read that very well although you may like lime green it doesn't necessarily mean that your customers like lime green so you want to try to remember that your customers who you're designing this for are not yourself um, photos are extremely important um, ideally the best case scenario is that you get somebody to take uh, good quality photos of your business or your product. Uh, everybody has a phone in their pocket these days. Um, you know, that's that's a, a good place to start. But, you know, if you didn't go to photography school or if you're, you know, you haven't spent a significant amount of time taking quality photos or if no one's ever paid you to take quality photos, then at minimum, I would say go spend some time on YouTube looking up how to take good photos with your phone. Uh, that'll be probably the most cost-effective way or method. Um, and if if you can't afford it and you're ready for it, I would recommend that you uh, get somebody to help you take those professional photos because having good photos can really make make the difference about, um, for your business to look professional uh, and really carry the same um, level of confidence for the consumer as you would hope to look for yourself. And so. Um, it, you might have a really great version. I don't know how many uh, how many times people um, you probably have, have have seen this yourself. You've gone to a restaurant, great experience, and you try to recommend it to somebody else, and you send them their website, and it looks like it was made in the 1990s. And you know, it's just not. It doesn't convey the same level of of uh, quality and seriousness and enjoyment as you would have hoped that it would. And and you want to try to make sure that your customers are able to see that consistency across the brand in all areas. And so you may not have photos, you may not be able to take good photos, you may not be able to pay for good photos. Well, um, luckily there are some websites that provide some great free stock photos that you can use. And so um, stock photos are like, you know, the, the photos that you'll see, um, you know, the person that's, you know, drinking tea in the coffee shop or, or whatever. Uh, it's just an image that can, be a placeholder for an image to come later. So if you're looking for just really good quality photos, um, you know, as a sort of a placeholder for the moment, there the two websites there, Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, and Unsplash allow you to download and use those photos for free without having to do any sort of special attribution or pay for them or anything like that. So uh, really great stuff. Um, at the end of this, I'll see if I can show you what some of that looks like as, as, as well. And then also light boxes. I realize I just misspelled light boxes. So um, you might notice if you go online to shop, you'll see that you know many products are sort of in this white background. Um, and you know, it just really kind of pops the product off the screen. And, and uh, depending on what type of product it is, if it's like a very long, if it's a dress or if it's something somebody's wearing, that's gonna be a somewhat different light box. But, um, if it's something small, like if you're selling like a jar of uh, hot sauce, for example, uh, those light boxes um, where you can place the photo, it illuminates the light around it, and get, or rather place the photo, place the product, and it illuminates the product um, extremely well with you know white all around it and light all around it. You can get from for from Amazon for like twenty dollars, and it'll make a huge difference to the way that your products look uh, in photography. And your the final point that I'll mention about taking good photography is again just consistency. Um, if you have shaky hands, consider getting a tripod. They they can be very inexpensive these days. Uh, you want to try to make sure you're taking photos from the same angles. Uh, you don't want to have you know one that's surrounded by eight bottles and another one that's surrounded by one bottle. And you know this one's got a background with cloth and this one has no background and this one has a black background. The, the moment that your stuff starts to look, uh, uh, what do you call it, just not aligned or not consistent, you're gonna immediately start to lose the confidence of your customer. Does anybody have any questions about that? Any of this stuff so far? Okay. So I have a, a few different examples here, and I believe this is probably gonna be one of the last uh, slides that I have, hopefully. And then I'll kind of show you just some different examples of stuff that I was talking about before. 
Um, so these are some really great websites if you're just kind of trying to get a, an idea of like, what can my brand look like? All of these are using Shopify, surprisingly. Uh, Bear Goods, um, they're a local uh, company that sells uh, leather goods that they've made. It's really pretty stuff. Uh, Felice Modern, their uh, women's clothing. Uh, Eye Candy Boutique, another women's clothing store. Penners, you may have seen, uh, has been around the block for a while if you've lived in San Antonio. I recommend you maybe just take a look at all of them and see, see how those are orchestrated or organized. Um, so this is all I had within the presentation, but I can definitely show you some of the things that I was mentioning um, through the internet. So um, does anybody have anything that they uh, that they want to know or is missing or I can kind of illuminate more on or have any other questions before I just kind of give you some additional examples um, or just some ideas of what things look like um, from different places. No, everything's been great. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I really appreciate it. Um, it's good to hear. So I'm going to attempt to try to share my screen from a different, from a browser. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Does everybody see uh, this web browser right here? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm just going to quickly show you a few different things that'll make your life ideally a little easier. So um, there are a few different websites, as I mentioned, um, Shopify is the one that I personally like the most and I misspelled it. Um, Shopify.com. Um, that, like I said, right now, they, I believe, well, it looks like they have a 14 day trial at the moment. They did have a uh, three month trial, but you'll see that they already have templates for a number of different types of businesses. So you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. You don't need somebody to create something custom. You can just use the template and make it personal to you by making sure that the aesthetics line up with what you're hoping for. Um, it's already got, you know, many of the different, um, Sales aspects already built in. Um, you know, you, you have immediately when you log in, you can see your orders, the transactions, you can see your total sales. It's really great. I recommend you take a look at that. But there are plenty of other platforms. For example, Squarespace is another popular one. Um, Squarespace and Square are not the same thing. Just a lot of people sometimes confuse those two. Squarespace is um, specifically for people's websites. And so, like I mentioned before, this one's really really more oriented towards um, like demonstration or information. Um, they do have a lot of uh, templates. Uh, they, you can build something that you can sell through, but overall you're gonna see the, the themes that they have here are portfolio, blog, online store, uh, resume, creative services, wedding, small business. So they have stuff, but you know, it's, it's really whatever you feel works best for you. Um, and all of them have a, a free trial. So it's, you know, worth taking a look at, spending some time and just feeling out what do you think is going to make you most comfortable. Uh, in terms of domains, um, if you want to buy a domain, there's a bunch that I like to, to look at. There's one that I specifically look at more common than not, just because it's quick. Uh, it's called the instant domain search. So if I just want to know, like, is the butcher.com available? Okay, well, somebody owns the butcher.com, but it'll recommend, you know, there might be some other ones that are fairly close to it. Um, and maybe that's worth it for me. Maybe it's not. Um, I, I forgot to mention this in the presentation directly, but you're almost always going to want to try to get a .com um, just because that's going to, that's, you know, basically like having a beachfront property. You know, it's great that you're located in the same city, but, you know, having the, the beachfront is probably going to look the prettiest. So, uh, and it's going to be the most memorable. So the extent extensions um, that they have now, dot blog, dot co, dot dev, dot io, um, many of these, you know, they're just going to be unfamiliar to cus customers or consumers at the moment. So it's really just not worth um, spending the money on something like that. 
there are also domain generators. So as I mentioned before, if you're stuck and saying, I don't really know what my domain should be, well, there's a whole bunch of recommendation engines. There's one that I like to use more than others, and it's called Lean Domain Search. And uh, the cool part about this one is that you can enter in terms and it'll spit back um, names that include those terms. So you see if I was food and then treat. Um, you know, it'll, if, if it has stuff that works out directly with those words, it'll show you that. Um, you can, you know, organize by search term or, you know, whether it ends with or starts with those terms, uh, organized by popularity. This is, I think, the best part about it because when you think about domains, you don't often think about the popularity of certain words, but for example, online may be more common than using the word digital. So you also might want to think about what is going to really resonate or be, you know, really relating to my customer. And having a sorter like that is um, sometimes beneficial. Uh, let's see. There's uh, another thing that I forgot to mention before. And you're probably going to want to uh, think about this one a little bit more. And so I mentioned that idea of consistency. Uh, you're going to want to try to find that same level of consistency along your social media as well. Uh, and it can be really hard these days to get your social media to align from your website to any of the profiles that you consider having. Um, you know, oftentimes, like I said, these things can, um, these things can uh, very quickly disappear as other people have the same ideas for names. Um, or use them for different social media platforms. So there's a website called Name Checker, and again, checker with an R, no ER. And uh, it allows you to see if um, the the social media or the domain or any of these things exist all together. So for example, if I type in Launch SA, you'll be able to see um, what is available and what is not. And so it's it's literally going through a search right now of all of these different websites to see what is available within launch it with the the moniker launch essay so uh launch essay.com is not available facebook twitter is not available but if i was let's say a photographer and my you know business was named launch essay for some reason well tumblr does you know have access for photos maybe maybe i'm good enough with saying you know i i'll use launch essay because i only wanted the tumblr um, so just another, another little, you know, quick, uh, tip. If you, if you're looking for consistency, you don't want to have exit, for example, if you have like two social media accounts, ideally you don't want to be launch SA on one and then launch SATX on the other, because you're going to end up, uh, making it more difficult for your customers to connect with down the road. So just another little, uh, tidbit there. Again, the, um, the websites that allow you to get access to free quality stock photos. Um, these are, are really great. I can pretty much type in anything into this and get something good out of it. And now they actually have some short videos, which you can use uh, potentially for ads or other, other stuff. Um, so, you know, let's just use coffee, for example. Uh, and all of these photos are downloadable for free for use, uh, however you'd like to. Um, and you'll just see like, you know, really quality photos and downloadable at, you know, extremely high resolutions. Um, you know, this is, this is probably one of the highest resolutions you can get, but again, for free and you can use it however you'd like to. So, um, or if, you know, I wanted to, let's say that I was a counselor and I wanted my website to have this kind of feel that you were getting, you know, personal service and, you know, you're going to relate, maybe I'd want a field. Green field just kind of brings out serenity. Oh, now you have all these photos and they're not watermarked with, you know, high stock photo or whatever. Uh, and you get something that's a lot more unique than just the generic photos that you might find on Google or, or otherwise. And that's called Pexels. There's also another website called Unsplash that's somewhat similar. And then it's .com. And again, um, you know, if, even if you're just personally interested in having a nice new wallpaper, 
and you can do that from here too. So it's really great stuff. Uh, let me see what else would be useful. Uh, you know, okay. So I think, uh, really at this point, I mean, that's the, that's kind of where I wanted to, um, wanted to really get most of y'all kicked off with, uh, we are going to have sessions going, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from now until I believe it's November that are going to actually provide a little more instruction on some of those platforms that are also going to go over building your communication strategy for online. Um, you know, it's important to think about how people interact with your uh, website and your web presence, but also um, understand how you can interact with them more consistently. So you'll see a lot of people, um, I might have broken up there. Let me see. You'll see a lot of people that um, use MailChimp or or something else to uh, communicate with their customers. You want to think about how you're going to engage with your customers, but also re-engage with your customers. So um, that'll all happen within this series that we're calling Launch Online. I really appreciate you all spending the time with me. Does anybody else have any questions or anything else that I can uh, address before? Uh, we close today's uh, session. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. No, everything was great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, uh, okay, guys. Well, I mean, thank you so much for spending the time with me. Hopefully you found this to be useful for yourself. Um, we are available at Launch SA to support your business growth and understanding. So if you have anything you'd like to follow up on or if you need uh, any sort of personal attention, by all means, feel free to um, reach back out to us. Uh, we put in the chat there the event right to the next session. So um, feel free to join us this coming Thursday uh, with our presenter, Zara Cruzan, who's going to talk a little bit about building that wet, that communication slash, you know, marketing channel strategy for your online business. Um, aside from that, I really appreciate it all again. Um, and just let me know if there's anything else that we can do. Our uh, best way to reach us is probably either email at team at launchsa.org or um, by completing our personalized assistance form on our website. Thank you all. <laughs>